Chapter 4, Reverence for Revelation. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. A third attribute of Mary's we observe in the Nativity story is her reverence for sacred things. There are several occasions when we observe her witnessing miraculous events and quietly registering them in her heart. The first of these is her reverence towards toward Gabriel and his announcement. We do not have any scriptural evidence of her running off to tell all of Nazareth, Joseph, or even her parents of the great event that has taken place. That is all the more remarkable when we remember that Hearth was a role prophesied of by Isaiah over 700 years ago, before. All Israelites would have known of the prophecy of the Messiah's birth and the virgin who would bear him. Now she knew she was that virgin and her child was the Messiah. Yet we observe no declaration, no bragging, there was no vanity. In fact, the only scriptural account we have of her reaction is that after the visit with Gabriel, she went with haste to her cousin Elizabeth, whom Gabriel had indicated was also the recipient of such a miracle, and in whom perhaps Mary felt she could confide without boasting. We witness Mary's reverence again when the baby arrived in Bethlehem, and shepherds came testifying of his divinity and of their angelic visitation. There were shepherds far from Mary's home of Nazareth. She must have wondered how they knew of such events, as she marveled at the sacredness of the miracles unfolding before her. Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Similarly, some years later, when Jesus was 12 years old, his parents took him to the temple in Jerusalem, as was the custom. On the way home, they realized he was not with them. Mary and Joseph returned to Jerusalem and found him in the temple. Like any mother worried over a lost child, Mary asked him why he would deal with her, with them in that way. When he responded that he was about his father's business, Mary must have marveled for a moment. She must have recognized that her 12-year-old son was not talking about the carpentry work of his earthly father, but about the work of salvation of his heavenly father. She must have realized in that instant that even at his tender age, he was taking on the mantle of the Messiah. Again, we do not see her making loud pronouncements or marching him back into the temple and advertising him and his teachings to all who would listen. Her moment of revelation is understated, understated in the scriptures again by this familiar phrase. His mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And then they quietly returned to Nazareth. As a mother of the Son of God and a uniquely special witness of Christ, Mary surely must have seen sacred things. And yet we hear nothing from her about any such moments. Whatever experiences she had between heaven and earth, she kept them quietly in her heart. As partners with God in the rearing of children, mothers can seek and expect to receive revelation from God, from heaven. Do we seek it? When trials come and our children struggle, and when we wonder what to do, do we fall to our knees and seek guidance from him who loved them first? We can receive heavenly instruction and insight in all of its forms if we will only ask. We can be blessed with vision and understanding in behalf of each child if we will only pray. Each child is a God and embryo, and as such, deserves to be raised in reverent care by a mother who seeks tutoring from God the Father in every aspect of that child's development. He will tutor us. He will whisper sacred truths about our children that will enable us to raise them under his care. But we must keep such communication from heaven sacred, like Mary, we must keep these things quietly in our hearts.